Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Akira Kurosawa's Akiru in 1952. Here is the Blu-ray and yes it's a Criterion of course um, and here we are with another Kurosawa review. Um, of course um, the last one and the only one um, of course I've done is Stray Dog um, which I thought was actually quite disappointing personally. Um, you know it started off with a lot of promise and it just kind of lost its way and had some flourish but it never really um, achieved anything that I really connected to. It was, it was kind of just an average kind of mark for me um, and yes this film, of course, is one of the more acclaimed works, um, very well known, of course, um, you know, if you kind of have watched any sort of Japanese films, um, you know, of course, you'll come across Akiru, um, you know, of course, Kurosawa is the most famous um, Japanese director of all time, um, and yes, many people, of course, um, say that this is one of his very best films, even though he's best, um, Seven Samurai, of course, is the most popular, um, but yes, this one, I watched Seven Samurai, you know, in 2014, um, of course, got the still book here. Wonderful still book there, um, even the back I really like, um, and yes, of course, Rashomon as well, I've seen, another Criterion, um, there's a couple more I've seen um, you know, as well, Hidden Fortress, um, and, and yes, uh, Yojimbo, um, but this one, it's one of the first ones I saw, it was 2015, so it's after Yojimbo, um, you know, and Seven Samurai, um, and yes, I sat down to watch this, it wasn't on Blu-ray, uh, it was on DVD, but yes, heard so much things about it, um, you know, of course, it's about an aging um, bureaucrat um, and basically works in this office, um, very, very mundane job, um, you know, paperwork everywhere and stuff. And um, just, um, you know, it becomes very, very clear what is trying to be said here, of course, just the mundane and, and pointless, really, um, you know, kind of this sort of work. Um, and of course, yes, it's very, very clear, of course, um, that Watanabe, uh, Mr. Watanabe, um, is basically. Going, he's going through the motions. He's not really living, um, which is of course very, very true. Um, a lot of the time, um, unfortunately, a lot of jobs, you know, just like this, um, just awful, um, and you don't achieve anything. Um, and this film, of course, studies that, and, and basically, um, you find out, of course, that the setup really is actually, you know, kind of what is going to happen to to this character, Dino, diagnosed with, um, you know, stomach cancer, um, and of course, only got a certain amount of time to live, um, and then of course. Through this, um, through the kind of um, this, you know, kind of uh, event of death, um, we are kind of we are shown, you know, the meaning of life um, and you, how you can actually, you know, really live and, and find joy um, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and yes, you have a couple of characters who he meets along the way um, who kind of affirm this, and he meets, and it's just, you know, of course, uh, scenes where you know he kind of it's very joyous, and he, you know, completely turns everything around and of course um, there's these people you know um, some of these side characters that are desperately wanting this park to be uh, this thing to be built um, and basically yeah then you know, there's this kind of um, the struggle to try to get this thing um, you know built and then of course Watanabe um, you know his mission really is to kind of um, eventually do this and of course you know the famous scenes with the swing and everything like that um, so of course yes it's a struggle um, but it, you know things do come about and of course, um, you know, within the film, he does die, our protagonist. Um, and the final act of the film, you could say the second half, although it's not really, it's not quite the second half, um, is of course many people, you know, relatives, um, you know, kind of uh, people, you know, acquaintances um, and stuff, and you know, just just different people, um, kind of discussing his life and um, and also and just basically saying, um, you know, find, trying to find the truth um, and kind of what happened. To make him turn around, um, you know, his kind of his views and everything, and his stance on life. Um, and yes, um, of course, one of the most acclaimed films really of all time. It's in the top two fifty on IMDb. Um, you know, Letterbox and all this kind of stuff. It's very, very high. And I watched it twenty fifteen, um, and I have to agree. Um, and for me, you know, it's actually in my top one hundred and fifty. Um, I think this is one of the greatest films ever made. Um, you know, not one of the best. You know, not not you know. Not as good as Seven Samurai, for example, um, for me, but apart from that, this is my favourite Kurosawa. Um, I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, one of the most human films. It is stunning, it really is. Um, of course, Takashi Shimura, um, who for me really is, is um, apart from, you know, Chishi Ryo, um, my favourite at the moment, Japanese actor, um, you know, I think. And yes, there's a couple of, uh, you know, other actors in Ozu films that have quite, you know, come close to that, but. Yes, just based on this, uh, Rashomon even, but uh, of course Seven Samurai, which I think is my favourite uh, role that he, he kind of plays, um, for sure. Um, but in this film, 
he is, you know, the main character. Um, and you could say he's kind of the main character in Seven Samurai, but more to, to show my phone, um, he plays that. But yes, this film um, studies all this, and it's of course a fall into despair, um, you know, and films um, as well at the same time, kind of uplifting um, and kind of portrayal of what it means to be alive, as I've said. Um, and yes, this film, it's just so stunning, you know, of course, I think um, just really, really dark uh, at the beginning of the film. And actually, you could say, as the film goes on, um, and there's a kind of bit, you know, near the, just after the second half where it kind of, um, you know, the tra that transition where it is again, very dark, but most of the film actually is not, it's not really that dark. Um, it's more uplifting, um, but it is truly moving um, because of course, you're, you're constantly thinking um, throughout all these joyous moments that it's not gonna, you know, last forever. Um, of course it doesn't anyway in life, but this really, um, you know, of course, he's only given a certain amount of time to live, um, and of course, at the beginning, of course, you know, he gets this guy in the hospital and stuff, you know, kind of says, oh, they'll tell, they'll lie to you and tell you, you know, it's kind of, it's nothing, it's an ulcer or something, um, and then it will be stomach cancer. Of course, he knows, um, you know, that it's going to happen, he's going to die, um, you know, very early on, um, and so do we, of course. So then, um, you know, there's kind of that going throughout the film, um, you know, that it's, it just makes it more meaningful, um, you know, it's kind of, it's not a film where, you know, it's not revealed to you, um, you know, and then it's, when it happens, it's, you know, shock. Um, it's different to that. It's kind of, which I think is usually better, is when you kind of know something, um, it's going to happen. Um, it's kind of just an eventual tragedy kind of thing. Um, but again, so uplifting in moments um, that you, you kind of just feel, you know, not just sadness, but, you know, definitely um, joy as well. And, and kind of just, yes, um, it is one of the most moving films, you know, that I've seen, uh, really, among them anyway. Um, it's just truly... Truly human film. Uh, performances are perfect. Um, you know, all the side characters as well. Um, there's a couple of characters um, who are played by some OZ regulars as well, um, which is nice to see. And yes, um, just all of the characters in this film, of course. Um, the young co-worker, um, who basically... Th them scenes are my favourite. You know, he meets this younger woman um, that's in his work. And basically, they go around, um, you know, kind of... spend time together, um, and he finds joy in that. Um, and it's just... It is my favourite moment of the film. Of course, he meets a, young, a guy as well, um, earlier than that, who kind of kick-starts this kind of going around and just, you know, just, um, yeah, it's just it's just so wonderful. It's such a lovely film, um, you know, it's so meaningful, pure film. Um, and then, of course, you've got the, the, the kind of the last third of the film, really, uh, mainly, which is very, very different. Um, it's a very radical shift in, in kind of um, structure um, and tone as well, a little bit, um, but it doesn't, offset anything because it's kind of um it's more flashbacks um you know kind of thing and you, you see a lot of cutting in between um you know the present in the film and then of course um the actual life of Watanabe um and yes basically um it's very very different but actually it's still perfect for me I think um it's just very risky to do that um the way it kind of shifts this but it's just it's wonderful and then of course it's them looking back on on, on this and kind of as well kind of changing their viewpoint although very, very complex there, I won't say. Um, but yes, I'm not going to get into true spoilers. But, you know, most of the film, you know, kind of... You can't really spoil the film because, of course, a lot of the stuff is revealed. Um, you know, what's kind of going to happen, um, you know, in the first 20, 20 minutes or so. Um, it's just kind of about the actual unfolding of events, um, how, how just wonderful it is. Um, it's a very unique film. Um, never seen any films like this. Um, and it's just a truly powerful one. You know, I think... Um, Takashi Shimura um, gives an absolutely monumental performance. Um, you know, of course, it's, it's it's a performance that is very you know physical as well. Um, you know, and just the, the stance that he has, the hunching over and stuff, uh, and just kind of frailty that he portray, portrays um, is is so good. Um, it's just wonderful, really. Is um, of course compare that to, to um, Seven Samurai. You know, his performance in that completely different he, he he really is the leader of the film um of the of the samurai um and, and this is very innocent um frail and kind of um a victim in many ways um and it's just obviously completely different you know and um both are perfect for me um and i do of course i do prefer the seven samurai character but this is you know one of the best characters in film um as well so i think yes um it truly is something of course the song of course that is used um throughout the film, um, it's so wonderful, it really is. I listen to that quite a lot. Um, whenever this is played, um, it brings me to tears, it really does. Um, there's a couple of moments in this film 
where that song is used, um, some of the standout moments, um, just some of the greatest moments in cinema. Um, probably for me, the best, uh, the best moment in this film, and you know, contender for, or at least putting Seven Samurai aside, um, contender for the greatest Kurosawa moment is is the swing scene, really. In terms of just uh, maybe not my favourite moment, um, you know, or scene or whatever, but just the way you know the visuals, um, music uh, combine, uh, and just emotion to kind of um, to say something truly spiritual, um, to portray something that is truly wonderful, just without any words, um, and it really is um, a stunning moment. Of course, it kind of links back at the end as well. Um, what an ending, it really is um, an emotional ending. So perfect visually, this film. Um, it's not, you know, a kind of, um, of course, it's not a samurai film. Um, it mostly, Kurosawa, at least early on, was known for this. Um, but this film is more, you know, I don't really like to compare it, but, you know, kind of more Ozu, you know, kind of kind of film, um, you know, kind of just family sort of drama. Um, there's no no sword fighting or anything. Um, but it, again, it's not like an Ozu in, in the way it's shot, really, or anything like that, or, or even the tone of the film or, or the structure of the film really um, to any Ozu film um, this is very, very different of course Kurosawa um, is often compared to Ozu um, there are quite a few, you know a few Ozus that I do prefer to this um, I do prefer Ozu overall um, kind of thing but I think you know it's they're both are great um, you know I think Ozu is better um, overall for sure he's in my top 10 uh, directors but Kurosawa was such such a, um, a master for me um, and this film it's truly wonderful, and uh, you know, it is, it is a moving drama. It's not, you know, it's not got any action or anything in it. Um, so it's very different. Um, you know, of course, even Stray Dog had had some sort of some action. It was more, you know, thriller and stuff. This is just, you know, a a drama film. Um, it kind of it is a funny film at times. Um, it's got loads of comedy in there, especially in the first sort of um, ninety minutes. Um, and it's just, I love, um, you know, all the scenes where he's kind of um, meeting these people. Um, of course, it explores. How he fails to connect with, with his um, his son, and, and you know, of course, the son's um, you know, partner there, and um, it's just, you know, they kind of it's kind of like Tokyo Story in a way, where they kind of they treat him, you know, not that great and, and stuff, and then they kind of regret that, you know, when when things do happen, um, which is very similar to Tokyo Story, um, of course, and some Ozzy films actually, um, you know, it's kind of this sort of stuff, and, and you know, um, then they do they do kind of um, regret things, um, so it kind of deals with that. And it's really shocking, you know, to kind of see this unfold, um, how they treat him, um, and it's just really it's such a sympathetic character, um, you know, and, and as well, combine that with how it kind of explores how he's, he's had a, a really mundane job for, you know, at least, I think, 30 years it was, um, and there's no satisfaction in the job and all this kind of stuff. And you have one of the greatest characters in cinema, the performance is perfect, um, you know, it's just, he can say so much um, with just expressions um with no dialogue really um of course there is you know he's mostly sad looking throughout the film a lot of the time um but it isn't you know it's a film where that really you could say is the base expression and then what he kind of um shimura kind of um does within that and kind of the subtleness to, to the bits added on to that kind of you know kind of um that sad look um is what's so masterful um you know and as well when he is you know joyous and everything and, and confident um you know it's such a kind of um a performance that is just it's really unique it's really genius actually um and of course because some people criticize you know it's kind of one note i don't feel that at all um you know it's kind of that's maybe his the persona kind of thing um you know just like maybe with late spring and stuff where where Sisukara smiles more um but this film really is something else um it's so complex um it's so deep and human um and it's just actually kind of you know, and, and which I always love. Um, it kind of got like some fantastical feel to it um, at times, dreamlike effect. Um, especially, you know, in the sequences when he's with uh, the younger co-worker, uh, and actually definitely the swing scene. Um, you know, and certain moments like that. The editing really is is striking here. Um, of course, all the flashbacks as well. You know, to, to when he's, you know, the baseball scene um, when he's kind of with his son. Um, it's just. It has this effect, this kind of dreamlike effect. Um, it's wonderfully done, um, and it really is perfect cinematography throughout um, the staging. There is always something going on, you know, kind of maybe not not as much stray dog. Um, I found it a bit flat at times, but there's always something going on within the frame of a Kurosawa film. Um, and actually, you know, of course, he has loads of camera movements. Um, a lot of his films, um, you know, the swipes as well and stuff, and all the different 
techniques that, that you know kind of um, have inspired many but you know in this film there's a bit less uh, camera movements maybe uh, more static shots um, in interior shots um, and it's kind of you can kind of in that sense compare it more to an Ozu kind of it's interesting to kind of um, look at but again very different um, but you know it, you can actually pay attention more to what's going on within the actual frame itself uh, instead of you know the camera movements and stuff um, which is really interesting to see there's always something you know it's perfectly arranged um, you know even just background characters um, and then you've got of course Shimura in the foreground um, kind of uh, giving off the, the really the tone of many scenes um, it comes from his his static feel and then you've got little things going on in the background um, which kind of you know it just adds so much you know I've seen this three times now um, always picking up on new things within the frame um, little details in the background um, it's just a truly wonderful film um, and the fact that this kind of came in between Rashomon um, and Seven Samurai um, both easy masterpieces for me um, you know some of the very best films again and you know it just it's truly something else you know the fact that he was able to do this and then of course the hidden fortress um, in the 50s as well um, which I've seen and I loved it um, I really did um, so you, you know it's just on form here um, Seven Samurai for me is his best film that I've seen um, I don't imagine really changing but you know I think this film so far is a close second um, who knows and some of the others might you know might come close or top it never know um, Redbeard looks very intriguing um, in that sense. It could be something I really love um, in particular. But yes, I think Akiru is among the best films ever made. Um, you know, it really is a perfect film. The way it portrays, um, you know, kind of life and death um, and life through death, you know, uh, the meaning of life um, and the way it kind of it uplifts you, uh, kind of inspires, um, you know, it's so meaningful because we know, uh, you know, what's going to happen. It kind of it adds, you know, weight to every single scene um, where he is kind of going around and trying to, you know, the vibrancy of it all. Um, but again, in, in itself, it's not, you know, kind of something that we kind of, we can't enjoy because of that. It's something that actually is more enjoyable, maybe. Um, and actually just in itself, these scenes are so joyous, so, so um, just, just uplifting um, and pure. Portraying life, um, you know, it's just, it really is something else. I think this is... One of the most emotional films uh, at certain moments. Um, at the swing scene, of course, um, you know, a moment that I'll never forget, um, you know, really stuck with me the first time. Um, and of course, now that I've got them, Criteria in the Blu ray was, was stunning. Um, you know, it's just, would I recommend this film? This is a film you have to see um, if, if you like films at all. You know, it really is, uh, I think, one of the best films ever made. And for me, while it's not quite in my top 100, I don't feel, um, not far off. And an easy 100% plus tier two, um, one of the best films ever made for sure, in my opinion. Um, you know, I can understand some people don't like the, the kind of um, the second half as much. Um, you know, I, I think actually, you know, once it gets to the yes, the bit where they're recounting um, his life and everything, um, you know, it's not quite as consistently um, something. You know. You know, that I liked as much, uh, loved as much, but I do. I love every second of the film, um, so I don't think it's flawed or anything I just think um, yeah I do prefer but that happens loads of times in films where you prefer um, you know sort of first halves or, or whatever or a kind of different acts you know the middle of a film um, it's just the way it is you know and of course very very sad film um, but for me it's not depressing I think um, I can maybe understand that but you know I think um, for me it's kind of um, it's to kind of um, yeah show the meaning of life and it's very very uplifting more than it is you know kind of um, I don't find it depressing at all, but sadly, I think it's very, very emotional. But it's the kind of moments um, it perfectly portrays how you kind of um, you really value your life uh, when you know that kind of how long you've got left. Um, you know, yeah, and of course, just wonderfully portrays um, you know the workplace and kind of um, all these different themes and messages. But of course, at its core, um, it's quite a simple um, you know human tale of of life and death, really. Um, and, and yes, just. A tragedy but also one that is truly uplifting um, and just spiritual you know it's so spiritual this film um, it really achieves that masterfully um, the script is perfection um, it really is a perfect script for me and um, so good this film um, you know the script's probably not as good as Seven Samurai um, but apart from that again the best Kurosawa script um, it's truly wonderful this film is an absolute masterpiece um, and I would highly recommend it um, of course 
more Kurosawa films to review. Um, you know, over the next next year in particular, I'm going to try and you know pick up some more um, Throne of Blood as well. I want to get the Criterion of that. Um, Hidden Fortress, I want to get on, on Criterion as well. Because um, before I just saw it on uh, DVD. I know, uh, shameful, but yes. I want to kind of uh, pick up most of these, uh, the ones that are available, and review them, of course. Stray Dog, of course, was my first one. I didn't think too much of that. Um, but this one is definitely a masterpiece, and um, I would highly recommend it. It really is a life-changing film for me, personally. Um, and yes, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, so thanks for watching my review.